Hey, and uh, yeah, another another tier list, and this is the seventh part with another 100 songs, ID 601 to 700. So this is pretty much the final stretch, uh, and uh, let's actually just get into it right away. First up, we got a forgotten religion. Uh, it pretty much feels like a much more vanilla song compared to at least the most recent songs we've had. It still has that, you know, sort of recent flair to it, but it has an overall older vibe. It's kind of slow with an emphasis on percussion and like slower, heavier sounds. Uh, it's sort of like this mix between somewhat menacing but somewhat magical. It's honestly a decent 6 out of 10 bit here. Sarachnes. Uh, it's pretty much the same as the previous song, but it's essentially faster paced, and the focus is on the, you know, higher pitch sounds, I guess, uh, while the percussion still marks sort of that danger of the dungeon, um, you know, this time is much bigger, since you are the boss, so, you know, that danger is, I guess, more dangerous, you know. Uh, honestly, Sarma's boss tracks are always pretty great, and I've said that this is probably strongest suit, uh, you know, like this more high-octane, tense songs, and you can definitely hear that in this song, uh, even before with the farming tracks, they still felt very important, very impactful, so, you know, it's it's pretty much his trademark at this point. Uh, as far as this song goes, it's a strong 7 out of 10 8 here. Architects of Prithinas. Yeah, we're getting into the uh, Song of the Elves thing, and th th there's a few songs to go through. This is the first one, it's pretty much magical, amble, sort of relaxing tone to it. Uh, it encapsulates the sort of magical nature that Prithinas has, uh, but, you know, sort of from a amble perspective, uh, a real rustic perspective, I would say. Uh, you know, like, essentially imagine, like, the, you know, Embleness of Lumber's songs, but more magical, essentially. Uh, you know, basically that's what this is. Uh, also, yeah, we're entering the era where, like, Surma pretty much makes most of the songs at this point. Um, I quite enjoy that it. it's very relaxing and sort of uplifting magical tone type thing, uh, and it's something that I really vibed with. It's a 9 out of 10 steer. Dance of the Mailer. Uh, yeah, this one is more whimsical compared to the previous one, even a bit more, I guess, adventurous. Uh, it's also a bit faster paced when, you know, compared to the track before. Uh, and I would say that here at least the faster pace does work better, since it makes you feel like you're just exploring the new city, you know, like meeting the people and everything. Although I didn't actually vibe as much with it, it's in pretty much like a remix of the you know, the one prior to it, so it's an 8 out of 10 8 here. Elven Guardians. Uh, it's on the slower side, focused more on the percussion and the choir, uh, which are setting like this, the tone of the song and, and sort of making it heavier. Uh, it's the theme of the Cadarn clan, uh, which, you know, has the, mostly on the focus on like the military and whatnot, uh, so obviously you know, the focus of the song is like being more serious and more heavy, but again, it still has that magical tone because it's Priftiness, you know, the magical city. So it's a 7 out of 10 8 here. Elven Seed. Uh, honestly, I expected a more humble and a bit less magical track, but you know, it's still Elven related. Uh, unfortunately, the track is a bit too slow for my taste, barely anything going on, and you can only like faintly hear the magical elements at times, uh, you know, save for some moments here and there. Overall, it's a bit disappointing. Uh, it plays at the northern part of Priftiness, so again, you know, I expected something more, but uh, yeah, no, it, the song just sort of never really gets going and just sort of sits there. Feels like when you need to wake up and it's like, you are half asleep, but you're half awake, trying to like not close your eyes. So you just sort of sit there for a few minutes while like your brain decides if it wants to go or not. Uh, and the song never sort of leaves that stage. It, it's not a bad song, I just really expected a much higher standard than this. It's a 4 out of 10 sit here. Faith of the Ethan. 
Just like the previous one, uh, this song is more ambled and magical, however here the song actually does a good job at just you know, sitting there. Uh, the previous one felt like the song wanted to go somewhere and just didn't, but here it feels like the song just doesn't want to go anywhere. Uh, you know, it's just a nice, relaxing, gamble song. Uh, you know, it sounds like the early RuneScape tracks once again, you know, especially around Mistalan area. Uh, this track was made by Ian, so uh, maybe there is that explanation for this song sounding like those. I quite like it, it's a very peaceful but with this sort of happy noobish mood, it's a solid 8 out of 10 8 tier. The Fires of Letya. Uh, it's your typical tense combat moment in a quest, you know, it plays during the Letya attack, uh, during the Song of the Elves, and it's fine, honestly, like it's not bad but it's also nothing super memorable, it's just a fine 6 out of 10 bit tier. It's another quest boss fight song, uh, I like how dark it is, uh, as well as how heavy it is. Uh, any song using bass parts pretty much just has my thumbs up. Uh, it's a nice song, uh, even though it doesn't actually sound as classical as his other tracks, but it's still pretty cool to hear what Ash comes up with. Uh, they're usually so different and, you know, do such a good job at portraying a more tense dark situation. Honestly, for this song, it's a solid 7 out of 10 8 tier. The Gauntlet. Uh, it's a 10 minute long song and plays at the Gauntlet. Uh, honestly, it's super repetitive, which I guess you want it to be if you're going to have like a PVM challenge like this and don't want players to sort of, you know, lose time changing songs and everything. Uh, it's very focused on the heavy sounds with the occasional breaks. Uh, it's fine, but again, it's kind of super repetitive due to its length. And it's a neon song, so it's not like we get like slight deviations like with Ash atmospheric tracks or anything like that. So it's a 5 out of 10 bit here. Iowerth's Lament. Uh, okay, so I, I think that at this point Ian should just go, you know? Like, I get that a lot of people like his stuff because it, it's more like runescapey in a way, but honestly like being runescapey does not make it better. I think most people simply haven't had to go through all of his mediocre stuff, which is why everyone uh, thinks that the old stuff was amazing and the new runescape music just doesn't sound runescapey, but let me tell you, if you had to listen to song after song after song of Ian, I would 100% bet you would drop the it doesn't sound runescape argument and appreciate the different composers of runescape. Because it's almost always the same, time after time. This song is more on the slow set vibe, you know, uh, it is called Lament, so there is that. But honestly, for 7 minutes, I was just bored out of my mind midway through. Like, I would enjoy this one much more if it was more of an ambient and atmospheric track rather than just a normal song, but it's Ian, and I don't think he can do anything different at this point. Like, the song's not bad, but we are getting to the point in the game's lifespan where, you know, they aren't 3 minutes long anymore. Every song is like 5 plus minutes almost every single time. I already disliked a lot of Ian's stuff back, you know, like in you know, the 200s and 300s when we were reviewing those, and now it's just worse, you know, especially because I already got a taste of other composers like Serma and Ash and how great those can be, you know, so like, you know, at least back then, like, the songs wouldn't meander and repeat themselves into oblivion, like, them doing that was actually pretty rare, but at this point, they all do, and it's pretty tiring, honestly, 4 out of 10 sit here. Mystics of Nature. Uh, it's pretty much the same thing as some of the other Surma songs when it comes to Prithinus, like, you know, Architects of Prithinus, for example. Uh, yeah, this one is more like a mysterious tone to it, but overall, it's still pretty good. 8 out of 10, 8 tier. No Pazaran. Uh, this is more what I expected of Ash, uh, the song plays during the barricade part uh, in Song of the Elves, uh, on the underground pass, uh, which is why the title is that, I would have a guess. Uh, they did actually pass like three times when I was doing the quest, uh, and it was quite honestly starting to annoy me, uh, and they passed at the end anyway, so I guess cool title Jagex. 
Uh, anyway, the song is very like dense with a constant hi-hat in the background and you know just melodies being cut by being introduced and then put away again to sort of create that feeling of struggle. Uh, it's a pretty good song, albeit not the most memorable. Uh, I do enjoy Ash's take on tense combat usually, so this is pretty much par for the course. It's an 8 out of 10 tier. Next up, Scape Crystal. You're not gonna guess what this song is. Actually, I mean, never mind, you actually do know always what the song is and where it plays because I always write the reviews first, so uh, yeah, you probably already know. Anyway, uh, it's another rendition of Scape Main, uh, but for Song of the Elves, because Song of the Elves came out. Uh, yeah, if the previous Elven songs like didn't give it away, I guess, at this point, uh, I do find it interesting how much more subdued this track is compared to the other Scape Mains and other renditions. Uh, of Scape Main, uh, it's like the song is trying to stay hidden from something, it's not think, too over the top or epic or anything, you know, the magical tone is there, it's just a nice rendition, it's a 7 out of 10 8 here. The Seed of Chris, uh, it's a very nice Christmas song. Uh, no, seriously though, uh, I think that at this point it could pass as one, uh, especially since it uses the same instruments. Uh, the beginning of the song reminded me actually of Riverside, and it has that, you know, same laid-back, relaxing vibe to it. Again, it's very magical, and there is a sense of happiness to it while being relaxing. Uh, it has a certain dreamy feeling to it as well, uh, while remaining somewhat down-to-earth. I know I have been enjoying Priftina's songs quite a lot, actually, but I did not imagine I actually would enjoy this one as much as I did. It's an 9 out of 10 tier. Sharp End of the Crystal, another song by Ian and you can really tell. Uh, something I've mentioned before is how his songs are more, you know, old school runescape-y and don't have that uh, oomph to them, uh, and you can notice that here. Uh, if this was Surma, for example, the dungeon would be, you know, coming down with, you know, the speakers in a way, right? Uh, also, I know I've complained about Ian, uh, you know, but this song is just actually good. <laughs> Uh, like, the melody is very catchy and the song has this struggling vibe to it with the tension and hopelessness of the situation, uh, meandering and, you know, firing for the spot, pretty much. Uh, so honestly pretty good despite how much I complained. It's a solid 8 out of 10 tier. Song of the Elves. It's a very ethereal song. Uh, it's more toned down, slow paced, with, you know, obviously very magical tones to it. Uh, it plays at the library, uh, which, I mean, I guess I wouldn't really expect anything else. Uh, the only shame is that the song doesn't really emulate how annoying this section of the quest actually is. Especially when you forgot the fucking stamina pots and it's like 6am and you want to go to bed. Uh, anyway, the song is actually really good. It's more of the, you know, atmospheric song type thing and it's actually kind of good, you know, it works sort of as a lullaby. It's a 9 out of 10 tier. The Spurned Demon. Uh, yeah, it's not as over the top for being a Surma song. Uh, it's solid, although I did expect maybe a little bit more, uh, but it is Surma, so, you know, the menacing tone is obviously guaranteed. Uh, there's this distorted vibe to the song uh, as you battle your way through it. Obviously with the magical tone to it, always it's priftiness, we gotta have our magic. Uh, it's just not as memorable as other songs, but it's still a solid 8 out of 10 8 tier. Stand up and be counted. Uh, this has the same flair as some other militaristic tracks we've heard, uh, but with a more devious tone and gives off a more... Uh, deorganized tone. Uh, at the beginning I thought we were going to have a sort of am attack situation, uh, but I, I still think that this song fits that mold to a certain extent. It's an interesting song if nothing else and I quite enjoyed it. Could fit maybe the scene of a movie really well, uh, especially with the tension of the situation. It's an 8 out of 10 8 here. The Tower of Voices. Very relaxing, whimsical song. Uh, of course, it has that magical tone to it. Again, Priftiness. Uh, but yeah, yet again, it seems like a more 
polished version of early in songs that have that dreamy aspect to them. It's a nice song, it's a nice 7 out of 10 8 here. Trahahern Toil. Um, it's an happy, relaxed song. Uh, it has somewhat the same vibe as the Dwarven songs, uh, with a sort of cheeky fun that they represent. Uh, it also maintains this magical tone to it, yet again, uh, you know, as if you sort of like, you're working with magical tools. Uh, it's honestly, I mean, obviously we're talking about Trahern, Trahern, I think that's how you actually pronounce it, I just like pronouncing it Trahern, because I find it more fun. Uh, but yeah, since they're in, I guess, the clan of like, you know, smithing and stuff like that, yeah, they're more closer in sound to the dwarves, but it's still a nice song, 7 out of 10, 8 here. Ballad of the Basilisk. Would you believe me if I said that this was a ballad? Uh, because it is. Uh, yeah, it sounds like the retelling of this heroic journey. Uh, the harp is a nice touch, and the song is good for what it is. Uh, a RuneScape 3 version does exist, and from hearing it, I, I think this is somewhat based on that. Um, still a very interesting song, if nothing else. 7 out of 10 8 here. Fight of the Basilisk. Uh, there are two melodies going on at the same time, one more urgent and the other more triumphant. Uh, they aren't in sync, so you just sort of feel like, you know, two parties doing different things at the same time. It's honestly a really interesting way of doing things. Uh, this song actually came out originally in 2009, and these uh, are like the perfect example of why I get annoyed when people say that only in tracks feel like old school runescapey. Uh, this track feels old school as well, and yet it has a totally different vibe to it, and I love how different it is. It's the same thing with Bond, you know, it's a different vibe, yet it still feels like very, you know, runescape very old school. As for this song specifically, it's honestly a solid 8 out of 10 8 tier. Jaws of the Basilisk uh, honestly, this sounds inspired on the previous track, uh, and since according to the wiki, they do play in similar spots, uh, so that's to be expected. The problem is, this song is just weaker than the previous one. Uh, yeah, sure, you have like this sense of urgency in combat, but it's, it's not as interestingly put, I would say. It's a fine 6 out of 10 bit here. Lair of the Basilisk uh, okay, did we really need four separate songs for a single quest? Uh, I, I think that's a bit overkill, you know? Uh, this song is more subdued, uh, it has a certain mysterious tension imbued to it. Uh, it's very twisted, in a way. Uh, it's more of a atmospheric song, uh, in the sense that it's there more to set the mood than anything, but it's still good. Also, the song has a second part where it goes into these the faster paced uh, with like Celeste, I think, is, is, is the instrument, uh, and then it starts introducing other instruments uh, back up again. Uh, it makes the uh, mysterious, intense song much more serious, uh, elevating the somewhat subdued, twisted nature of it. It's a decent experiment, and honestly, I'll give it a 6 out of 10 bit here. Reign of the Basilisk. Sorry, did I say four songs? Yeah, I, I meant five. Five songs for a single quest. Yeah, Jagex is being a bit overkill yet again. Uh, this song plays during the final boss fight during the Fremenic Exiles quest, and it feels like the sequel to the previous song. In the same way, Ash has used atmospheric songs and then introduced the boss fight songs, which include the same elements but are, I guess, more open, more grand. Uh, this track sort of does the same. Uh, not as much, given that composers are different, but still. This track, however, feels more adventurous and triumphant while being a combat song than it is tense. I do enjoy how it is different, however, uh, I, it does sound more like M Attack than a regular Ian track, because this, yeah, this track was made by Ian. Uh, maybe, you know, now people can drop the not sounding old school argument, since Ian also doesn't always sound old school. But still, for the song, solid 7 out of 10 8 here. The Bane of Ashihama. Uh, it's a boss track by Surma. Uh, yeah, you know, like, this is like those 
Theater of Blood tracks, you know, it's very tense, more on the dark side, you know, a lot of, not a lot of triumph, uh, and more on the hope you survive vibe that, uh, you know, the Theater of Blood tracks have. It's more fast-paced and it's great for tension, you can really feel your time just running out. Honestly, not much else to say since I already spent a lot of time describing those uh, Theater of Blood tracks, but yeah, this is essentially the V2 version and it's pretty fucking solid, 8 out of 10 tier. The Everlasting Slumber. Uh, yeah, essentially this is the prequel to the song before. Uh, again, since it's by a different dev, you can hear many more differences. Uh, the overall song is again more atmospheric, very mysterious, and that's pretty much the vibe of it. I don't know if it's just me today when it comes to describing the songs, or if the songs are just getting more bland, but I don't really have a lot to say about them. Uh, so yeah, for this one, 7 out of 10 8 here. Arboretum? Arboretum? Fucking, I don't know how to pronounce the, that in English. Arboretum. That's how I'm gonna pronounce it. Anyway, it's a magical song with a lonely feel. Uh, it's like, we, like, weirdly this is the only song where you don't need to, like, specify that it's a music track on the wiki. So, like, usually, when there are songs that use the same name as pieces of content, you always need to specify that what you want is the song. So you write a piece of content and you write in parentheses, music track. Uh, but, yeah, essentially, not here. Here the song is essentially the default and you need to specify the location if you want to go to the page with the location instead. Just a little factoid I thought you, you know, I would throw in. As for the song, in the middle there's sort of a crescendo that explodes as this magical discovery almost. Uh, at that point the sort of mystery is gone, the lonely feeling is gone. Uh, it's like seeing the, you know, tree for the first time and then, you know, it goes back to what it was for that, you know, mysterious and lonely vibe again. Uh, yeah, his in musical structure is v very fucking amazing and totally not insanely predictable. Uh, anyway, it's it, it's a good song, I thought a 10 8 tier. Dark Mayor. Uh, this track takes a while to get going since it's almost 9 minutes long. Uh, it feels much more atmospheric at the beginning and it has this somewhat magical but hostile tone to it. It sort of builds up to be this menacing track and then sort of very spooky. Uh, you know, that spooky tone underlies the rest of the song, pretty much. Uh, it plays, obviously, in Dark Mayor, you know, so I kinda get the spooky tone. The ending, however, I did not get. It sounded way more magical than spooky or menacing. While the transition to it felt naturally, after it was fully transitioned, it just sounds somewhat out of place. Anyway, it's a 6 out of 10 bit here. Domain of the Vampires, and yeah, if you didn't realize, we are on the Sins of the Father quest, so we went from Songs of the Elves to From Rex Exiles to Sins of the Father, so yeah, the first, like, 40 songs here are all quest-related. Uh, but yeah, this track is pretty much like the previous track, although a bit, it has a bit more going on at times. Uh, I've said it before that Mauritania tracks really aren't my favorite, and after a while they start blending together, and I think this is the perfect example. Ian tracks related to Desert or Mauritania are just very weak in my opinion. Uh, this didn't make me fear that I was in like the presence of powerful vampires, it just sort of made me feel a bit uneasy, like, you know, when you are in an unknown, potentially hostile place. The slow pace could have been really good, but it just didn't do it for me. 5 out of 10 bit here. Lament for the Hallowed. Uh, it's a very lonely song with a dash of magic to it. Uh, it plays at the Icy Graveyard, so it makes sense to feel a bit far away, uh, not just because it's literally far away, but also because it calls for that sort of far away history of a place that was sort of forgotten because of time. It's a fine song, but more of a background thing for me. 6 out of 10 bit here. Mauritanian Mystery. It's a mysterious track with a spooky undertone. It plays during the shadowy figure, uh, you know, mid tap during the uh, darkness of Alavel Quest. It also plays during Sins of the Father, which is why it's here, although it was released earlier. Um, but, you know, it, it makes sense, I guess, to have that, you know, spooky tone. 
Uh, much like the previous track, while the track is good and fits the purpose it was created for, as a standalone track, it's, it's fine, I guess. It's a 6 out of 10 bit tier. The Terrible Caverns. It's a combat song and honestly just a faster paced version of the Terrible Tower. Like, you know, the song that plays at the Slayer Tower, which I gave a very solid 6 out of 10. Uh, the track being faster paced makes it more solid all around since these stakes feel higher, but at the same time, the triumphant moments do feel much more triumphant, which doesn't gel well with like the rest of the song. The more devious moments, which in the original help it be more down to earth and diffuse some of the tension, also hinder this version of the song since it makes it sound at times like the stakes actually aren't all that high after, you know, all which, you know, in here they kinda are because you are doing, like this is in the middle of the quest when you're in the mire ditch laboratory, so the stakes are a bit high but here as a result they, the song makes it feel like they aren't high. So, yeah, it's a 5 out of 10 bit there. The Terrible Tunnels. Uh, yeah, okay, so this is just the, a slower version of the previous track. L like, literally just a slower version. I, I guess it works, you know, since, you know, it's closer to the original, so you do have these more mysterious and somewhat spooky vibes, uh, and, you know, that works, but then... You know, again, the fucking triumphant beat in the transition really makes everything feel much more weird. You know, yet again, it's like, much the, much like the previous song, the more devious nature, to a certain degree, diffuses the spookiness of the situation. For the Slayer Tower it worked, but here, this isn't a silly quest or a silly place where you kill some monsters. This is the middle of a pretty important quest, so, you know, I would wish the song was a bit more serious in that regard. 5 out of 10 bit there. Upir Liki. Likey? Something on those lines. I don't know. This fits. Um, Jagai just makes some weird ass fucking names. It's pretty much a boss fight song, uh, and you can feel like the sense of urgency in it. The stakes are high, you need to win, everything depends on you. Uh, and yet, it just doesn't really feel as high stakes as I would love it to feel. I do like the contrast between the somber, heavy percussion and the higher sounding instruments trying to maintain hope in you winning the fight. It's a pretty solid song, although it's not very memorable and I was a bit disappointed it wasn't as much as, you know, the stakes being super high. 7 out of 10 8 here. Vampire Assault. This track kinda surprised me because of how old it sounded. Uh, even with the previous track being more on the old school side. Uh, yeah, so just this plays during a quest, and I guess Jagex, because they are reusing certain songs that were already in the game, decided to actually list them now alongside some of the newer uh, songs that they are using within the quest. Uh, because this track actually came out with Aid of the Myra Cube back in 2006. Funnily enough, it's actually not that different from the previous tracks in terms of vibes. Again, it's more combat focused, with you know the tension to mix it in while you know giving that sort of vampire vibe. I did not fucking rate it in my notes, so I'm gonna do it now. 6 out of 10 bit here. Watch your step. This is the spooky version of Aztec. It's a fast paced, somewhat spooky song. Uh, it plays during Allot Sepulchre when you are going through the floors, so the song is very much supposed to be high octane tension. Even though this place actually makes me feel more like an adventurer, passing through hazards just to get some nice loot, the song is very much on the spooky side of things, super tense. I don't really feel very triumphant, I guess, uh, when going through this place and doing this activity, and I think that's fine. Although again, it, it's a bit weird that we sort of just have no tracks that sound very adventurous, kind of like Indiana Jones, uh, even though that's kind of what we're doing here. So, weirdly enough, I think the tracks like Aztec would fit much more here because they are tense, they are high octane, but they're not that super serious, spooky vibe to them. Either way, as far as this song goes, I tell it tonight here. Well, Hallowed Hair. It's this spooky but also a bit devious track. 
sort of like, you know, the place is playing with you, having fun making you spooked. Uh, it's way more toned down than the previous track and just makes you feel spooked due to how mysterious the place is. It's a nice song, but nothing that grabbed me too much. 6 out of 10 bit here. You have my attention. Athens spookiness. Uh, this plays during the Lower Neil Draken uh, first appearance, so it's fitting in, you know, you have this almost otherworldly vibe with this spooky tense vibe. It makes you feel small and insignificant while you feel like Draken has all the control and you feel somewhat lonely, isolated in an hostile land and you sort of are in the belly of the beast, if you will, uh, except the beast knows a lot better than you do. Ironically, this song did grab my attention. Uh, the song almost uh, goes quiet and then comes back up uh, and, you know, into this big, just tense moment. I think the song encapsulates the moments in the cutscene and is somewhat meant to be synced to it, which, if it is, honestly, amazing impact. Only problem is that, as a standalone track, it's not just as amazing as some other tracks, but it's still a very solid 8 out of 10 8 tier. Rest in peace. This song feels like a lament. It's a sad, sour goodbye to something you can't hold in your hands anymore. Your GP. You can't hold your GP in your hands anymore because you died and you lost it to pay off the costs. In real life, you go into that trying to not die. In RuneScape, you go into that because you died. Jokes aside, I actually really love this song. I would say that it's one of those that doesn't really feel very runescape -y, and you know what? It's actually really good as a result. The intro section is just sort of a lament with only a piano, much like the one in the middle of Shadowland. And then it opens up to this sort of blown in your face almost anger, and then it calms down again. Almost like we are hearing someone's emotions when knowing of the death of someone. Like, outside of RuneScape tracks, just as a regular composition, this shit's really good. And it feels even more imposing when you can hear the imagery of Death sitting there, in his throne, just overpowering you, making you feel diminished due to his sheer size, making you feel unimportant as he doesn't pay any attention. It's honestly really impactful. The only other song I can like feel essentially that was somewhat like this was Thrall of the Serpent. And yes, this song is made by Ash, and honestly, only him could pull off a song like this in RuneScape sound font, I feel. This is where the classical music background goes from hindering to just absolutely helping. After I gave it a listen, I just had to hear it again just for my own enjoyment this time, without having to review it. If, honestly, any songs are gonna enter a list of those I will just start listening regularly, this is one of them. 10 out of 10 steer. The Enclave. I was so excited just to realize the song isn't original to old school RuneScape. Uh, it was made by Iain, not Ian, Iain, yeah, one of those, you know, three tracks he made. Uh, the track is this sort of tense but combat focused song, uh, and then it has this more sad, toned down break, and then going back to normal. Uh, it's very hopeless in a sense, they, like, you sort of feel like you need to be triumphant, but even if you're going to be triumphant, you're gonna like experience some losses. These play during mobilizing armies, funnily enough, so uh, it I guess tracks with that, uh, but you know it also tracks with the Enclave since uh, you know this is where the PvP up pretty much is nowadays. It's a solid track, 8 out of 10 8 here. Safety Numbers. And is old school RuneScape just gonna keep yonking tracks from RuneScape 2 and RuneScape 3? Because this is another track like that. I found it a bit weird that Bond was back, since at this point he wasn't with Jagex anymore, and yet this was released way back when. I'm gonna have a lot of fun having to just, you know, re-listen to a lot of these tracks in the future, even though they aren't actually gonna be changed at all. As for this track, very toned down, but somewhat faster paced to imbue a certain, a certain sense of, I guess, hostility and tension. It's a 6 out of 10 bit here. C Minor Shanti. It's a spooky fan rendition of C Shanti 2. The song is just... and... What the fuck did I write? 
Oh, I just didn't write away. So, my fucking script has the song is just and I think it fits the spooky vibe quite well. It's just what? Did you just forget the word? Uh, fine, cool, nice. Uh, good job, past me. Anyway, fucking, it's pretty much an holiday song, so, you know, I'm not expecting excellence from it. But it's actually quite a fun song. It's an 8 out of 10 8 tier. Eve's Epin Epinet? Epinet. Epinet? Eve's Epinet, whatever. It's another holiday track from the same Halloween event. Uh, this one is more spooky sad, but like, it's not entirely sad, I guess. Uh, maybe more spooky mysterious? Uh, it's devious and magical, and then it sort of opens up to this more fan song with the bass being really good. I love bassy sounds in RuneScape, I think they should be used more. Uh, I think sort of everyone trying to follow the Aldian songs made most songs sound very high-pitched on the scale, and I, I don't vibe with that all the time, honestly. Uh, it then evolves into this, you know, more typical Ian song, unfortunately, which, while not bad, it also allows me to sort of blend all the other 400 Ian songs together. Yeah, take a guess who made this one. 6 out of 10 bit here. A dangerous game, a tense track with a focus on combat. It seems a bit disjointed at times and not as menacing as most wilderness tracks. It's more RuneScape 2, like the tracks we've been hearing up until this point. It's a fine track, although I find it a bit repetitive, which, you know, kinda led me to get really fucking boring by the end. Fought at a 10 seat here. Scrub's Foot Descent. A funky, happy track. It's very fun to listen to, and the fast paced nature of the tempo really elevates the track. It has the same vibe as a lot of the other goblin songs, and overall, just, you know, creatures of the like, such as gnomes and dwarves. Uh, it has this clumsiness to it that makes the track super fun to listen to. I would say that it's still a bit towards the generic sometimes, uh, but this is an holiday song. You know what, it's a Christmas song, why not? But let's be generous, you know, not a tennis steer. Next up we got Soul Wars. And Mod Grace enters the fray, yet another RuneScape 2 track. Uh, I could already taste the fact that it wasn't an original when I saw the name, since the minigame itself is taken from RuneScape 2, uh, and I wasn't wrong. Uh, the track just mixes this more toned down, subdued noob feel with the high stakes and tension of the percussion. It then breaks into this militaristic type percussion with the drums. I never played Soul Wars, so I have no idea if this is actually accurate to the minigame or not, but I'm just gonna go ahead and say that it actually is accurate. Uh, also, funny that, uh, you know, the same technique of having two things, uh, you know, going on at the same time was something I mentioned just a bit ago. Um, it does get to a point where it's a bit repetitive, and that's probably the biggest problem of this song. While overall it's a solid experience, the parts just sort of blend together at some point and you can't really have any of them stand out. So 6 out of 10 bit here. The Waiting Game. It's the prequel to the song before it. Uh, this one is a much bigger emphasis on the toned down nature of it, making it very mysterious and somewhat tense. You then have sporadic strings and militaristic type drumming in short bursts, uh, until the flute comes in to play the main melody to top it all off. Then this you know, pretty much just repeats until the second time the flute comes in, which, you know, comes accompanied by some synths underneath, I think. Uh, it's like, time for triumph is sort of arriving, but obviously you need to fight for it. It's, it's a solid 7 out of 10 8 here. Temper of the Storm. It's the boss track for Tempora, so it has this sea shanty vibe to it, being somewhat tense but still fun, like a naval battle is taking place. From the creator of Sea Shanty 2, I didn't expect anything less, honestly. Uh, in a way, it reminds me a lot of those RuneScape 3 tracks from the pirate quests, like Jack Attack, for example, uh, and I wonder at which point this is inspired by that. It's a solid track, but I would say it needs something more, like just a bit more to make it memorable for me. Uh, maybe in the future I'll change my mind, but right now, I think it's an 8 out of 10 8 here. Mm -hmm. 
Barbarian Workout. It's a solid workout song, very likely an homage with the workout montage songs you see in movies. It's a very interesting take, that's for sure, and one of the reasons why I love RuneScape songs. As for the song itself, I mean, look, okay. It, it's actually a good song, and, and you know, I can already hear the synths going fucking wild. It's, it's a great montage song, it's a 9 out of 10 S tier. No, 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 S tier, yeah, there we go. Race Against the Clock. Uh, this song sort of gives you this sense of urgency, which, you know, kinda tracks since it plays during the part of the quest where you need to be urgent since you are on a time limit. Uh, part of the song, however, makes it feel like most urgent moments in quests, so it's a bit generic to that point. Uh, it also just has 26 seconds of silence for some reason, since the song is actually only one minute long, actually making it the shortest RuneScape song in the game. Uh, carried on concept alone, but, you know, 7 out of 10 8 here. The Ruins of Kamdazal. It's a mysterious song with a very strong magical tone to it. You are exploring the ruins of a civilization, so it, it makes sense to be this more toned down, slower paced affair, uh, which is really good at setting the mood, honestly. It again, however, did not make enough to make it memorable, but it's a 7 out of 10 8 here. Organ Music 1. So, this just plays when you play the organ. Like, again, this is part of the effort of Jagex to make every song that you can hear in game actually be in your playlist, which is why this is in here. It, it's fine, I guess. I mean, it, it's not actually like a, an actual song song, but it's more like an, one minute of just someone playing piano. Or organ, sorry, sorry. Uh, you know, it's still not as bad as some songs even made, however, so you know what? I'll give it a 5 out of 10 bit here. Organ music too. I mean, y you're not gonna believe this, but it's pretty much the same thing as organ music one. So, uh, five out of ten meter. Cleanliness. It's a chill song, ample tones as well. Uh, it's actually new and made by Ash, although the beginning does have these uh, semblance to Miss Talent tracks. And then Ash does this thing and sort of introduces this vibe like you are, you know, at the beach just sort of enjoying a nice day out with friends. Or, or well, you don't need to be at the beach, but yeah, you know, it, it's very like that friendly, happy, being with friends vibe. Honestly, it's a very enjoyable track, at, you know, at points sounds like you're just enjoying a sitcom. Uh, you know, like, uh, and look, we really haven't had too many S tier tracks on this one, so let's just, uh, let's just uh, 9 out of 10 S tier. Hey, psst, kid, you wanna hear Mod Ash play piano for 5 minutes? Well, you're not gonna fucking believe your luck. Uh, yeah, this is just Mod Ash playing piano for 5 minutes, pretty much. And it's pretty enjoyable. I think, you know, in this track, you can really hear a lot of the other. Ash tracks in the game, we, you know, like at least when it comes to their vibe. Again, it's very classical in nature, but it's very enjoyable and admirable. I mean, you make an option in the clan all to play the piano, and this is one of the songs you can, this is the song you can hear rather, uh, when you actually play it, if you click on the background, because you can actually play the piano yourself, fun fact, uh, and you know, you really didn't need to go this fucking hard, you know, I mean, like, most players aren't even gonna care about the clan all, never mind about the piano itself. Uh, you know, like, it, it didn't need to have an option at all, and yet, yeah, 9 out of 10 is there. Beneath the Kingdom. It has this uh, distorted and twisted tone to it on the background, while the main melody is composed of short bursts that create this almost magical feel. Uh, to the song, although in a more tense manner. It does slowly pick up the pace until a section where it's more fast-paced for a bit, uh, which would encompass the danger you go through, I guess, in the catacombs, due to how hostile that place is. Uh, it's a 7 out of 10 8 here. Confrontation. Pure tone setter. It's just like background scenes with slow percussion repeated throughout. I guess it's not meant to be much of a song, you know, but it's it's really a nothing burger and I have a hard time calling it a song, honestly. It was then my mod Ed, uh, which I don't think is a composer, so I'm guessing this was just more to just have some background noise for that part of the quest. 
Although Ed has made like two or three tracks before and they were actually fine. You know what? I'm not gonna be mean. I'm gonna give it a 5 out of 10 B tier just because, you know, it's not much of a song. The Houses of Corinth. It has this hopeful melody on top of everything, while the background is more focused on the strife and struggle of the situation. It is at points a bit too happy in tone, uh, taking away from the situation and the stakes it introduces, uh, but that's just for a little bit, nothing major. Uh, it does end pretty suddenly, I would say. Uh, at first I thought my song simply just didn't load because my internet was like sort of having an e-cap, so the song just wasn't loading anymore, B but no, the song just ended. Yeah, 7 out of 10 here. <music> Judgment of the Depths. Uh, this track sounds somewhat based on Confrontation, uh, the song we heard before the previous one. Uh, it has this menacing tone to it while having magical parts. Uh, it's also very toned down, slower paced, uh, at first slowly building to a more faster paced section where the song becomes more menacing, but you also feel much more powerful. And then it sort of just goes into this transition and then go uh, back to the main core of the song. It's a nice 7 out of 10 8 here. Military Life. It's a militaristic track. Uh, honestly, I never enjoy them much and this is no different. It's more on the humble side as far as, you know, the tone goes, uh, and the track isn't bad, despite my uh, distaste of such songs, it's a fine 5 out of 10 bit here. <music> the part where you die. Uh, this song is named that because in the quest, you die. Uh, as for the song itself, it's a pretty, you know, high octane tense fight. It's funny that at the beginning of the game most dense combat songs and sort of this triumphant tone to it, but now most combat songs just have this sort of hopelessness to it due to how big of a threat things tend to be, and you really want just the end boss to be this high stakes type situation for the quest to feel more memorable, I guess. Uh, just something I thought I would put out there since uh, I think that it's an interesting evolution, uh, you know, perhaps reflective of the environment we live in. Anyway, as for the song, 7 out of 10 8 here. Regal Pomp, which I mistyped as Comp for some reason. Well, I'm not fucking changing that. Uh, maybe we don't have as many triumphant combat songs because now we have space for end of quest cutscene songs with that happy triumphant ending. Uh, yeah, this song is pretty much just that. Uh, it does have a bit of a silly tone to it, like the song isn't entirely serious in the sense of like being triumphant. Uh, and it's more of like this story of the happy ending, but you know, still, 7 out of 10 8 here. Rose. It's a sad song. It's about Rose, and I think despite not being the best song out there, uh, I think it actually fits the quest quite well. Honestly, like, to me at least, I really enjoy that quite a lot. There's just sort of this bittersweetness to the melody, and you know, maybe it might be my mood, but um... You know, it's not the best song in the game, but it's a 9 out of 10 S tier. Itsy Bitsy. There's barely any sounds in this song. Uh, it's just a few noises here and there, and the same goes for instruments. It feels like, you know, things just sort of are sneaking around, and this might actually make some people uncomfortable. It's a great example for an atmosphere song, and it would be the song I would probably point to as an example of a RuneScape song that really makes you feel uneasy. It's very stripped down, and to be fair, it was made by Mod Adam R, audio developer in charge of voiceovers apparently, so I guess the experience here is more on the sound effect side of things than on composing songs. I would say, as a song, it's not really a song, but it's a pretty amazing experiment, so I'm gonna give it a 9 out of 10 8 here. Beyond the Meadows. It's a relaxing song made by Mod Arismel, which was on Jackass for like 6 months. Uh, yeah, when I'm telling you that the game had multiple composers, this is the extent of what I mean. The song is actually quite nice. Maybe not what I would call memorable right away, but there's a you know, this sort of ambleness to it while being very relaxing to hear. Makes you feel sort of warm inside, you know? 
Uh, it's not as ample as probably most of the Mistalin songs as it clearly sounds much more modern, but it's basically a modern take on them. I think the more I listened to this song, the more I fell in love with it. Not at a tennis tier. The Forest of Shazian. Okay, you're not gonna believe this. Yeah, it's another J-Mod that stayed at Jagex for 6 months. This time, Mod Rainbow. Uh, I wonder if these are just internships or what, but I do appreciate their small yet significant contributions to the game. In a way, RuneScape is as great as it is due to the community it has, so, you know, any contribution, big or small, is a good thing in my eyes. Except for Mod Jet, but we don't talk about him. Uh, this song is actually very toned down, very mysterious, and represents this sort of being in unknown place type vibe. The song then, build, the song then builds up to this more lonely vibe. It's a 7 out of 10 8 here. Not a moment of relief. Okay, you're not gonna believe this. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's another J mod, six months. This time I could actually I could not find the mod name, but according to the wiki and checking the checking the the LinkedIn profile, it was James Rogers that made this one. Uh, this song is kind of the same tone as the previous one. You sort of uh, have this mysterious vibe to it, but this time is a bit more magical and with a certain dash of tension. It's pretty enjoyable. Seven out of ten eight here. Out at the Mines. Same vibe as the previous one, but this one is more magical and is a bit, you know, faster paced compared to the previous one. Uh, there's this sort of happiness that the song has, or rather satisfaction. Yeah, I think satisfaction is a better word in this case. Uh, there's this adventurous excitement of doing something new, you just unlocked type deal. Uh, funnily, this plays at the Blast Mine, a place barely no one uses it, and the Sulfur Mine, a place that a lot of people hated that barely no one uses it because the favor was removed. 7 out of 10 8 here. What happens below? It starts as this heavy, slow sound and then sort of transitions to this more urgent type vibe. It never really leaves that amble vibe it has, uh, it just sort of feels like a ballad at points like a waltz, you know? Uh, it's a 6 out of 10 bit here. The Ancient Prison. Hey, hold up, I know this one. Uh, yeah, it's another RuneScape 2 track, this time for Nex. Uh, I think this track is actually great at setting the mood. Uh, it has this dark, mysterious vibe to it, uh, as if it is bad, but like, you just can't not be intrigued by it. There's something afoot, and this song really sets your interest in knowing what it is, but not giving away too much. Just like setting the atmosphere to pique your interest. Unfortunately, it's a bit on the short side, but it's an 8 out of 10 S tier. S tier? No, A tier. A tier. It's an A tier. A festive party. It's an happy song, sounds like something that would play during a credit sequence of a Christmas movie with an happy ending. Uh, this did play during the Christmas event, uh, and yeah, it's a 7 out of 10 8 here. The Angel's Fury. It's your typical high octane 10 stone that Serma loves giving his songs. Here, the tension is very clear, specifically with how fa fast paced the song is. And then, the song sounds very familiar all of a sudden. Uh, yeah, parts of this song are actually based on Angel of Death, the song for next. Angel of Death for from RuneScape 3, uh, and these moments are actually really good. Honestly, I wouldn't have minded a direct remade of the song to fit old school RuneScape. The RuneScape 3 version is so good, and compared to the other parts, the tension is more bittersweet. It's more light in the sense that it's a negative tension that makes you feel sort of sad, but also a positive one because of the boss you are fighting making you feel triumphant. Although those parts of the song are more from the boss's perspective, so it's more about Nex being happy to fight you because she is appreciative of what Zaros did for her, so the bittersweet nature of the tension in Runescape 3 moments isn't so much about you fighting a boss, but rather two parties fighting each other with something to lose, and the party that wins will be triumphant, not just themselves individually, but also to whom they support. 
the new parts of the track just sort of feel like the more vanilla adventure is struggling against a monster and the tension that comes with it. Honestly, it was a missed opportunity in my opinion, but the original parts are really just that fucking good, so 9 out of 10 is there. Zaro's Zeitgeist. It's the sequel to the Ancient Prison song. It plays during the boss fight as well, and it's great. There's this constant percussion going on, setting this really tense vibe, and yet there's like sloth scenes, always giving you this idea that whatever you are fighting is much bigger than you. Honestly, it's not the flashiest song, but I really enjoy this more toned down, if you will, just purely focus on sort of percussion songs from Bond. Uh, unfortunately, Old School RuneScape doesn't really have them, but I heard his stuff like this in RuneScape 3, uh, you know, the more toned down songs, and they're pretty great. Uh, they work as a sort of trance to keep you focused on the fight, and the scenes here just sort of work perfectly to be more atmosphere within the song, just hanging around, uh, unbothered by your presence, and even taunting you to a degree by just repeating without much variation. It might not be for everyone, but I love these songs, and after a while I think people actually do learn to love them as well. Ten out of ten is there. Catacombs and Tombs. It gives these combat jungle vibes. It's also not an original because, yet again, Jump Flex yanked another song, and this time an entire quest from RuneScape 2. Uh, this is the RuneScape 2 section, I guess. Uh, the song is made by mod than A, the same mod from M Attack, so the song is more on the combat exciting vibe. It's weird that two songs involving goblins are this eye octane and fun to listen to. Uh, this one is more on the serious side, but still has that adventurous charm to it that M Attack also has. I mean, it's the same sound font, yet the songs just sound so different when it comes from this uh, mod. Uh, it, they only just sound very electronic in a way. Um, I honestly think that his songs are actually really good, and this one is no exception. No, 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 tennis tier. Next up we got Don't Panic Zanek. This song is very simple, uh, including only a piano and a harp. It's a sad song, I like the more experimental stuff the game has been doing at this point, uh, musically speaking at least. Uh, songs that only have a piano, more atmospheric renditions, songs that don't really sound very runescape -y. We have been just eating good at this point, you know. Uh, as for this song, I enjoy especially the fact that you can probably show this to people and they wouldn't exactly know this is a runescape song. It just doesn't sound very runescape and that's a good thing, yet again. We have a better sad theme for Zanik as sort of these despair of lament that is elevated because the devs didn't feel like they needed to stick exactly to what Ian did back then, and the song just became better for it. I might revise this one in the future, but for now, it's a strong 8 out of 10, 8 tier. Dusk in Ubisk. Same composer as before, then A is back, and this time it's a more menacing, slower paced track. Mostly focus on percussion while a synth plays and the breaks are kind of the same, but you essentially have a sax. I think it's a sax. Uh, it's a decent song, although contrary to the ones before this one, didn't grab me as much. It's more on the background side for me than his other stuff. I think he was better at faster paced stuff. I do think it's still great, he did try like different sounds and I think that elevated his songs. But here it does, to a point, feel like he was trying to be more vanilla with his sound, and I think the song suffered from it. It's still a decent 6 out of 10 bit here. Temple of Tribes. First of all, you don't get away with the Pink Panther theme inspiration. Secondly, the song is very spooky. Uh, it's this slow, constant percussion with this sort of synth. Uh, the same one that appears on the background of Barbarianism, I think. Uh, the song is interjected from time to time with sax and string sounds, which gives this song a bit more of a goofy vibe, uh, which I mean, again, sax is kind of the theme sound for the goblins, so I guess that makes sense. Unfortunately, the song wasn't anything too amazing that really grabbed me, it was a fine 6 out of 10 bit here. Uh, 
The next theme, it's a very triumphant song. Like, you know, someone doing something heroic. Um, honestly, I ended up liking the song more than I thought I would. Uh, at the beginning, I really didn't like it, but for me, as the song went on, I think it's actually really solid. I do like how it starts right away with the chorus and no intro, and again, like I didn't like it much, uh, but as the song went on, it became my favorite part for sure. The more I listen to it as well, uh, you know, it has sort of these dreamy moments to it that sound very nostalgic, uh, amongst the more triumphant moments. Uh, this is another one I might revise in the future, but for now, 8 out of 10 8 here. The Guardians Prepare a very short song that, well, sounds like you are preparing for what it is to come, it has sort of that tension in bit to it. Uh, yeah, I just noticed now that the song name also actually mentions it. Uh, right. Uh, anyway, this song was actually made by Stefan Lord, another JMod I never heard about. Weirdly, the JMod was a Jackax for 11 years, and how did I never hear about this guy before? His LinkedIn shows that he was the head of studio and then later the uh, the audio director, but at least in Old School Runescape, there's barely any songs of his. You would think that there would be more with how long he has been in the company before he left, but no, he made 6 songs for Old School Runescape and like 20 for Runescape 3. I guess he was more in charge of like, you know, voice acting and stuff like that and just general audio management rather than making music. Uh, as for this track though, it's fine. Again, just a bit tense with the magical tone to it. 5 out of 10 bit here. Guardians of the Rift, the sequel to the previous track. It's mm, a magical track that gives you this busy vibe. While the track actually isn't very big in terms of sounding, it makes you feel busy, like you always have something to do. Uh, it does play during the minigame, so you know, that might be why. Uh, you have this magical song with this combat tone to it, but more from skilling perspective of working on a team rather than being full combat. You also do have more menacing moments, but the magical moments are always there to maintain the focus. The heavy section sounds very interesting and very RuneScape 3 honestly, much like then M, or then A actually. Uh, these parts are also sort of less runescape but I like them, it's a nice song honestly. I like this one quite a lot, although honestly I might need to hear it a bit more in the future, but for now I'm pretty dead set on 8 out of 10 8 here. Temple of the Eye, and this is a more toned down version of the previous track. It still maintains the same magical tone, but it's calm as if you are just in a magical place. Which to be fair you kinda are, so uh, you know. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a nice song, not much else to say about it. 7 out of 10 8 here. Awful Anthem. Uh, yeah, the song uses only an ARP, and I really love that it has some wrong notes in there. Uh, as far as the song goes, it's, it's pretty rough, but honestly, within the context, it's pretty funny. It's even funnier that it was actually made by Ian. 1 out of 10 8 here. Bob's on holiday. We reached the point where Jagex started making available in-game songs that weren't on playlist. So in a way, we're ending on the note we started. With a fuck ton of Ian songs, because most of these are old enough that no other composer existed at Jagex. The song's fine, it has a charm to it, you know, it's like this fun, happy stint of Bob and Neat going on vacation. It's pretty fun, 7 out of 10, 8 here. Brain Battle. It's a combat song. It stems, but in a way it has this undertone of piracy to it. Uh, although here, uh, you know, she just became way too serious, uh, so it's a serious pirate undertone, uh, but still very much the overwhelming sense in tension from combat of fighting and evil dude pretty much. 6 out of 10 bit here. Kane's Tutorial. Uh, this just sounds like parts of barbarianism. Uh, it's more toned down and mostly features the percussion with the synths I mentioned earlier, ironically. Uh, obviously, since it's a tutorial, it's more fitting uh, as you don't want to distract players and it's an interesting take, I guess. It also sounds like the prequel to the two Barbarian Assault songs. So, 6 out of 10 bit here. The 
The Consortium. Uh, it's this fun track with this bass. It's sort of happy with a cheekiness to it since it involves the dwarves. Uh, this track actually reminds me of a Mudskipper melody for some reason. Uh, I think the vibes are sort of the same, though this song is much more on the slower side and not so busy. Uh, 7 out of 10 8 here. Crest of a Wave. It's a sea shanty song, very fun, you know, very we're going on an adventure type deal. Uh, for such a short, short song, it, it's pretty good, I gotta admit. It's pretty fun to go through these songs that play during quest cutscenes and uh, are on the, I guess, smaller or simpler side and compare them to songs we have now. Yeah, of course they aren't gonna be as good, but it's still a nice look into how things used to operate and the differences from even back then, primarily the songs having less stuff going on and making them more simple to the songs that we have now, which are sometimes an absolute cacophony and this incredibly modern composing. Uh, as for the song, 8 out of 10 8 here. Delrith. It's a tense combat song, but much more on the evil spooky side, because, well, demon, Delrith. These songs are actually very short, I'm noticing, but, you know, just as I said above, they aren't the most complex, so they don't need to be super long. 5 out of 10 bit here. Dogfight. And, yeah, it's a song where you fight the bouncer during the Shadow General, or the General Shadows mini quest. Uh, it's a nice song, it has more of that younger charm of Ian's songs with, you know, more stuff going on, but still nothing major. It's a nice combat tense song with a more adventurous spirit to it. So it's another 10 here. Dorgashun Treaty. It's a triumphant happy song, kind of like the Zanic theme song we heard uh, earlier. Uh, it has a mix between castle medieval music and cave goblins. 6 out of 10, B tier. Eye of the Storm, uh, it's the song that plays when Alvarg attacks and, you know, this is sort of a spooky, dangerous song playing during it. Uh, the tension is palpable, it's not as much of a song as it is sort of a music, movie, theme track to accompany the scene. It's a 6 out of 10 bit here. The Fairy Dragon, it's this mix between fun and magical, sort of like, you know, the clumsiness and fairy type deal. It's a 6 out of 10 bit here. The Fremenek Kings. Uh, the song is just mostly percussion with like a synth accompanying it. Uh, it plays during the quest where you are criticizing the king, so I guess it fits this serious moment and plays into its tension. Didn't really like it too much, but I mean, honestly, it's just a fine song. 5 out of 10 bit here. The Gates of Menaphos. Oh, finally, we got another dev, uh, made by Unknown. Yeah, I totally know that J-Mod. Anyway, if I had to guess, it was probably made by Ian, uh, given the style. Although Bond is also a candidate, but my man is on Ian, having heard the previous cutscene tracks. It's a 4 out of 10 C tier. Impulses. So we have Impetus. And now we have Impulses, to form the full name of the Pure Pure minigame. This song is very mysterious, very spooky at the beginning, with very little instruments going on uh, to sort of leave you in the dark. Uh, it never really evolves past that, but I think it's a great mood setter that works just fine, especially when Impetus already exists. I was supposed to rate this song and I didn't, I'm gonna give it a 5 out of 10 bit here. King of the Trolls, it's a boss track that has sort of this slower percussion and constant sax going on. It's fine, again, nothing to major. Serviceable, 5 out of 10, B tier. Look to the Stars, uh, it's a magical track with this fun adventurous tone to it. I honestly dig it, it's just a very uplifting, cozy vibe, like, a, you know, every sort of otherworldly type track. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, again, sort of title of the track, Otherworld, yeah, you get the point. Uh, you know, the track kind of does that, it's cozy, it's fun, it's an 8 out of 10 8 here.
The Penguin Bards. Ah yes, the musical performance of the penguins. Clearly they knew what they were doing when they crafted this just absolute masterpiece. Uh, also, did you know that the pings are actually based on Daft Punk? They're not, but honestly, who is going to fact check me on this one at this point in the video anyway? So yeah, I mean, it's not much of a song at all, it's just more of a kids show performance, I would say. I, I mean, it's not bad, it's like... It's a 2 out of 10 tier. And that pretty much concludes our last tier list, because uh, yes, this is the last tier list, as you can see, 700. Old School RuneScape does not have 800 songs, yet, anyway. Meaning, I could either make this part much longer, or make an extra part that is shorter. Instead, what I decided to do was to simply wait until the game gets 800 songs, and then I can make a part 8 with the songs from ID 701 to 800, and then, you know, once the game gets 900, I'll make another part until 900 songs, and so on and so on. I think that is much more manageable than having a weird part that only has, currently, I think it's 68 songs or something along those lines. And then I have to, like, restart from there once I get back to it. So, this is the last part until the game gets 800 tracks. Now... I will have a video explaining everything, like, because there's a lot of stuff that I learned from, obviously, doing all of this music stuff and whatnot. For now, however, what I can announce is I essentially just have two videos planned. Number one, I'm probably gonna grab all of these parts and put them all together into just a massive episode, so people can just enjoy that instead and don't have to click through multiple videos. Uh, secondly, I'm gonna grab all of my S-tier songs and actually combine them into a mega video, with only S tier songs. I like listening to RuneScape music, if that hasn't been obvious already, uh, but oftentimes YouTube not only has lower quality songs, sometimes it's just outright missing some songs, and overall just... I, I just want something that is big, that I can just put on the background and listen, and not have to continuously worrying about skipping S or continuously worrying about choosing songs or whatever. So those are the videos that I have planned. As for the series future, well, as I mentioned, part 8, when the game gets 800 uh, songs, but for now, I'm gonna take a break. And I say taking a break because this is not the end. You see, what kind of person reviews every single old school RuneScape track and doesn't review RuneScape 3? Yep, exactly, I'm doing RuneScape 3 someday. I'm gonna take like maybe a two to three month break. I try to, you know, release these on a monthly basis and even on a monthly basis it's rough, you know what I mean? Because there's a lot of effort that goes into this. Not only do I essentially listen to all of the tracks and write a little short review about them and rate them, but also all of these images that you are seeing here bar the ones that I actually cannot get to, such as some events and stuff like that that are usually from the wiki, which shout out to the wiki for actually having all of this fucking information available. Pretty much most screenshots are mine. And then I put the name of the songs in the screenshot, so all of these pictures I have to do them even if I have the wiki picture for them, right? I have to write all of the text and everything. All of the footage that you see in the videos, that's on top of that. So essentially, I end up like having to write the name of these tracks like pretty much five times each. So per episode, I write them like 500 times, pretty much, that I have to write names of tracks per part, pretty much. So yeah, I'm gonna take a big break, but RuneScape 3, music tier list coming someday, again, like, I'm gonna give myself three months around that, but yeah, if you liked it, obviously, as always, the tier list will be in the description, uh, you can check it out, I will link it there, and uh, yeah, just have fun making your own tier list and just sharing it with other people. That's it for me, and uh, I'll see you in the next video, which I have no fucking idea what it is, bye!